Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to talk about Profile Manager in Lion Server. Now we're doing this now because when you set up Profile Manager it sets up a number of services for you automatically uh, to get you ready to use Profile Manager and so it's really a good idea to set it up uh, if you're going to use Profile Manager a little early in the process you can take advantage of all of that. Now Profile Manager basically is uh, a great system it's probably one of the better upgrades that they did to server and it allows you to manage all of your devices so your iPods, your iPhones, your iPads, uh, laptops laptops. It allows you to manage all of those things in such a way that you can get to them remotely. You can push changes to your computers that way. Uh, you can wipe your computers remotely if you need to. It really is a uh, industrial grade uh, manage, management system for all of your devices. So it's really neat that they've been able to bring this into the home environment as well so that we can manage all the other devices that we've got under our household with our families and things. So uh, it really is a, uh, a, a great perk of the system and what we're going to do in this uh, particular screencast tutorial is we're going to show you how to install it uh, and get the basics set up and then uh, in the future what we're going to do is then show you how you can begin to, to manage your devices with it. So if you go into in the Lion server right here we're on the profile manager screen and uh, again the big buttons turn things on and off but we don't want to do that yet because as you see here in the settings under device management it's disabled right and the whole goal of profile manager is to manage our devices so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by clicking this configure button and what it's gonna do is go and read all of our settings uh, in our computer to determine what we've got so that we're ready to take the next step alright so now it tells us what it's all about in terms of configuring device management we're gonna click the next button here and uh, it's going to say to continue you'll need to configure your server as a network directory now what's important about that is right now we haven't set up anything with users or groups and so our computer right now is just its, its own entity and so if you're going to control other devices uh, across uh, a network, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it, you've got to have a network directory set up. And that's a directory where it stores all of the stuff about your users, about your groups, about your machines, those kinds of things. And so it's saying, hey, I know you don't have that, and so I'm going to set it up for you automatically. So you click Next, and it's going to go about the process now, reading the settings, determining what we've got, and it's going to put together a basic network structure in place. Uh, the other thing it's going to do, as we'll see here in a minute, is it's going to create uh, an open uh, directory master uh, for us, well, which is a special type of directory that allows us also to, to manage all of these things uh, remotely over the Internet and those kinds of things. All right, so the next screen here is it, uh, it has us set up a different password. Now, you've got to remember, since this is a directory, it needs a different password to deal with that directory. It doesn't use the same password as your administrator password that you created to get into server uh, and to get into your computer and those kinds of things. It needs a separate password. And so, again, it defaults to directory administer, to dr admin as the account name. You can put in any kind of uh, password that you want. Uh, let me just put one in here myself. Um, and... Uh, and so what happens is you can change this if you want to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at the defaults for right now just for simplicity's sake. But it does need another username and password. So you're going to want to remember this, write this down somewhere, or put it somewhere so you remember it, or you won't be able to get into your directory, and that's not a good thing. So you want to write that down. Click. Okay, now we're on the organization information screen. Now, if you're a home user, you really don't have to put anything on here, uh, but you can enter the name of an organization if you want. Um, it will help uh, other people identify your server uh, remotely uh, if they're or if they're on the network and looking for it. So you can put anything you want. I'll also put the word home in there. Uh, just to just to put something in there and then you can put in an administrator email address and this is if if users have problems out there and they need to contact somebody you can put in an email address uh, that you want them to contact you at uh, and that way the information would come to you. Uh, you don't necessarily need one, but just go ahead and put your own email address in there because then that way what will happen is it will feed back information to you about uh, issues with the server, things like that. So it's always good to have some kind of administrative email address uh, filled in there so you can fill that information in. Now what it does is it says, hey, I'm going to confirm the settings. I'm going to be setting this up. So your, your server is going to become a directory server, and here's the settings. We've got the administrator name just being directory administrator. The account name is uh, uh, DIR admin, uh, organization's home, and here's your email address. Are you cool with that? You want to make that happen. And so if everything looks right, you click setup. If not, you can go back and fix anything. But we'll just click setup. And then it goes, and you can see over here, it's creating the open directory master. 
And so it's creating a directory from which now you can link your users and groups and begin to link your uh, all of your machines and devices and things like that so you can manage them remotely. As I said, this is a, a really incredible uh, addition uh, here to Lion Server and it puts uh, things that corporations use in the hands of home users and it, uh, it really works out well, especially if you've got a family with a bunch of devices and you want to be able to manage all of these things uh, remotely. Uh, it really sets you up to, uh, to do that well. So we're going to let this uh, think here for a minute. You can see all the different things it's going through. It's, it's authenticating to users, configuring access controls. Uh, it's really basically adding all of the things that it will need to make this happen. Now you can see it says here that the certificate uh, that I have isn't signed by a trusted source. Now it's important to understand a couple of things about this. Because we're setting up a home server, uh, what it means is that it's not a, we don't have a SSL certificate, it needs SSL to communicate. We don't have an SSL certificate that's going to uh, automatically sort of uh, authenticate itself to say it's trusted. Uh, you know, when you buy one, there's an outside authority that says, yeah, we vouch for this uh, particular server. And so the computer does all of that stuff behind the scenes, checking that out and knows, okay, it's okay to communicate over the secure connection now. Uh, but because we're doing a home one and we have a self-signed certificate that we set up in the other tutorial, uh, it's, it's going to require us to have another, um, another profile that we have to download on each device that just says, yeah, you know what, if this particular server comes and asks for uh, information from this device, it's it's okay to accept it because we know it's good. So it's just telling you, hey, unless you have a trusted one, you're going to have some of these problems out there making that happen. So what we'll do is we'll just put our particular uh, certificate that we created before and then click Next and, and it will go ahead and set up the web server certificate so that as it does everything, it knows where, uh, where the trusted information is. So when we're done, it says fine, everything's good to go, big check mark, that's a good thing. We click Finish. And now what's going to happen, it's going to do its final setup process and you'll see that, uh, that we've got everything configured that we need. And you can see it's reading the settings right now and it's getting everything uh, put together so that now you'll notice instead of saying uh, disabled, now the device management is enabled. Now that doesn't mean that profile manager is running right now, right? Because we have the big button up here that turns it on or off. And so we're going we're gonna to leave it not running. I just want to show you how to set it up. A couple other things that we want to do here in, in the setup is see where it says sign configuration profiles. Uh, I just check that so that uh, it'll it'll code sign everything. I go and put in my uh, particular certificate again that I'm using, the self-signed one that we set up before, that SSL certificate. Click OK. And now what will happen is it'll sign the configuration profiles for me so that at least that information's on there. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to have because it makes the, uh, the whole process of setting up your devices a lot easier. Now, what I'm going to do in a future screencast is I'm going to uh, turn on Profile Manager and then I'm going to show you what it looks like to manage these devices uh, over the web. But I don't want to do that yet because we don't have any users or groups set up. And so what we're going to do in the next screencast is we're going to talk about users and groups, which is up here in the account section. Uh, once we have those, kind, those things set up, then we can go in and begin to uh, configure Profile Manager. But I wanted to set this up ahead of time because as a home user, instead of having to go through setting up all these little network things, all by yourself, Profile Manager itself sets up everything for you in that simple wizard and now you're ready to go with your network. Everything is there to use and uh, we're ready to go to, to make Profile Manager work as well as a bunch of the other services that we see here in the sidebar. So that's all I have for you this week. That was a simple walkthrough of how to set up Profile Manager and some of the background things with that. Uh, I'll be back at you uh, next week with another screencast, as I said, talking about users and groups. And I'll come back with another one to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.